Hey guys, Darcy here, and let's talk about the basics of audio quantization. Let's get into it. All right, so before we get into actual audio quantization, I just wanna say that today's video is gonna be around the basics, just what the tools do. In a later video, I can go into more of a demonstration purpose, but I just want to keep this video simple. We have Luna open up here with a single drum track. We want to bring up audio quantization. We'll do the same thing we would do with MIDI. We're going to hit the Q on the clip itself, and that's going to bring out a drawer on the left-hand side. But before we apply any settings, one thing we're going to want to do is go over to the view area with clips and go to warps or use the keyboard shortcut of control, command, and left and right on your keyboard, and that will toggle through your views. The reason we want to look at the warp view of this is because what audio quantization is, is a smart feature of using the actual warp feature within Luna. It's essentially going to apply warp markers for you automatically based off of your settings and then warp the track for you into the quantization that you want. So let's bring that back up and let's go over what our settings are. On the left hand side, we have the grid, which is the straightforward thing you would expect. It's what kind of notation you want to work with. And if you want triplets or dotted notes, for instance, if I go from off here and I go to a 16 note, you'll see that it applies warp markers based on 16 notes that it finds. You can also make it follow your snap setting. So if I make it follow the snap setting and then I go to my grid up here and change that to eighth note, it will automatically change the quantization, which can be very helpful if you like to work quickly with keyboard shortcuts using shift and then you're using plus and negative on your keyboard to change your grid values. Let's take that off for now so we don't get confused and then what we have is three settings for quantization your swing your strength and range so swing is essentially adding more character or feel strength is how much it's going to tighten towards those grid values and range is a form of detection for how many warp markers it should add so if we were to zoom in on this feature right now and we're looking at the eighth note, we increase our strength, it's trying to tighten. Now, if you notice, this track is fairly on the actual grid, so it's not picking that much up. Very little is moving here visually. However, we start applying swing, we'll start to make some adjustments. It'll start to move certain notes further out to give it more of a swing feel. And if we want to also, increase our range it may also pick up more notes or it'll pick up less notes depending on how far we go the sweet spot for this is 50 percent it's usually the one that's going to get you what you want but you can adjust by feel when we change our, to different notations you'll see that it increases and increases even more it's really going to depend on the source material that you have and the grids that you are setting up Lastly, our final setting here in terms of the upper half is the auto apply. That's as straightforward as it sounds. If you take off auto apply, you're gonna have to manually click the quantize button. You may prefer that if you are quickly moving between multiple different tracks at the same time and you don't want to accidentally uh, apply some settings, but to each their own. Something important to keep in mind with how quantization works is that the settings you are applying are not being compounded they're always being applied against what the original signal is so for instance if i add a high swing here and i go turn this off it immediately goes back to the original state when i bring it back it goes to exactly what i had it before if i add 16th note then i go 32 and then i go back to off and I go back to eight, it's always going from that original state of what the off was and figuring out where it should be. It's not that you apply 16th note, then you add eighth and it's quantizing against what that last setting was. And then you apply it to the quarter and then it just gets to a point where it can never get it back to its original state, which is really good from a kind of a being type perspective. Now, down here at the bottom is priority. I'm gonna talk on this one briefly, but I, this is one that deserves being saved for another video. In short, what this does is you have the ability to have multiple tracks either selected or as a track group, and you get to decide what the priority is. So for instance, if I were to duplicate this track, if I were to select both tracks, you'll see here that on the left-hand side, we have a diamond on the end of each track. And what this will essentially do is allow 
you to decide which track is the one that the first transient that it finds is between the two is the one that it's quantizing against and the other one is staying in line with that quantization. This is really important for things like drums where phase issues become an, uh, a problem. If you were to individually go to each track and individually quantize them, then there would be overlapping signals that would start to sound weird and phasey, like you'd put a flanger effect on it, for those who are not familiar with what phasing is. So when you select multiple together, you're able to actually quantize them together and set a priority, for instance, the kick drum to be the thing that everything follows. But let's table that for another video. For this last point, I need my headphones. Something that's really important for you to take into account is the warp mode. Because we are warping the sound, how you warp what material will change things. For instance, going back to the sound where we have it on eighth note, we're gonna put the strength very high, and then we're going to increase the swing to give it a later feel. I'm gonna play it off, and then I'm gonna bring the setting back on. What I want you to hear is what the warp mode of polyphonic does to these drums. So let's listen to it off. Now we'll put the eighth note with the high swing on. So that's not good. Now if we go from polyphonic to razor blade, this is Luna's warp mode specifically for drums or other types of percussive uh, instruments. Listen to the difference. All right, so it's still a bit messed up. So let's bring that swing back down a bit till it sounds good. And let's switch back to polyphonic. So some of those kicks and the, uh, and the open hat, are they have differences in how they sound. At the end of the day, it's going to come down to what you feel is best. Maybe you want to throw a very speed on it. or maybe you don't. Either way, being conscious of your warp mode is what's gonna be important to ensuring you're getting the sound that you want, whether you're being experimental or you're trying to sound accurate. Make sure you pay attention to that setting for all the tracks that you are applying this quantization slash auto warping essentially to. Anyway guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, let me know that. Let me know what you would want me to go over in more detail when it comes to doing demonstrations with audio quantization. I have a few ideas, but I would love to take into account what you would like to hear as well. And otherwise, have yourself a good day.